What is going on everyone? It is James, aka the Comic Raider, back with a long overdue video for the channel. Uh, I just got out of seeing Thor Love and Thunder, and I thought, you know what? I haven't dropped anything new in a while. I need to get on here. I need to make a video. I slacked on the last couple movies that I watched where I didn't make one, uh, which is Top Gun Maverick. Amazing freaking movie, one of my favorites. Uh, definitely my favorite this year, probably. And then uh, Jurassic Park, which was definitely a mid. Uh, so anyways, but that's beside the point. What we're here for is Thor, Love and Thunder. So I will give my non-spoiler first, and then my spoiler one. So non-spoiler is, it's a fun, enjoyable movie. Uh, pretty much what you expect to see from the trailer. You got Gore, the God Butcher. Uh, you have Thor. You have the mighty Thor in Jane Foster. You got Valkyrie. And uh, shenanigans ensue. You have a badass villain. And you have the humor and jokes that you probably expected from the trailer and seeing as how it's I don't even know how to pronounce it correctly but Takahiti Wahati? I have no idea but that dude uh he's back Thor Ragnarok very similar in the sense of how the humor goes maybe this one's a bit more humorous I probably personally would have appreciated a little tiny bit less and a little more focus on the serious, especially Gore the God Butcher. But overall, it is a fun, enjoyable movie. Worth a watch. Um, I don't know. I mean, where it ranks as far as Marvel, I don't know. Somewhere in that mid-tier for me, I would say, probably. But, uh, yeah, so that's the non-spoiler. It's pretty much a fun, enjoyable movie that you kind of expect to see from the trailer. Now for spoilers. Uh, I did write a few things down so I will be looking at my notes as I go about this. I will say that um, you know it's a good movie really carried by the awesome job of Christian Bale man. Um, I'll spend a little bit more time on gore later. I will say one of the things I wanted to, um, I tried to look it up online. I couldn't really see anything, so I don't know if it's too new. And I could be completely tripping. I have no idea. But the little Marvel credit scene runs, and you have, like, the different images of the different characters from the movies and all that kind of stuff. I saw some Disney Plus stuff as far as I saw, like, a, a part of Moon Knight in there. I don't know. I could be wrong. I thought I saw, like, Black Panther in the water. I Maybe it sounds crazy. I'll need to watch it again. But I thought right after Moon Knight, like, right towards the end on the Marvel portion, because it's Marvel Studios and the Marvel part was still going, I don't know. I thought I saw, like, Black Panther in water. And I was like, okay, is that an allusion to... Black Panther 2 coming out and Namor and Water. I don't know. Like I said, I could be completely tripping. But if I'm not, and it was, and I am correct, you heard it here first. <laughs> but honestly, I think I'm probably completely tripping. And whatever I saw has nothing to do with that. But it all flashes very quickly. So I was just trying to catch whatever I could catch. Now, uh, opening scene, pretty cool. Uh, gives the background of Gore and why he is going to go on and do what he does, which is Butcher the Gods. I mean, for the most part, basically follows the storyline a little bit differently in the sense of it really just focuses on him and his daughter. Um, if I remember the run correctly, which is Thor by Jason Aaron, as far as the whole Gore the God Butcher saga part goes uh i mean then of course he does mighty thor with jane foster and all that kind of stuff too but definitely a great run uh, i loved it i would say if you care to check out a review shameless plug here i did a review on the comic book fiend club channel of that a long time ago 
So check that out. That is still on there. But uh, yeah, so opening, you know, him and his daughter, uh, he's praying to the gods. Gods don't answer him. R.I.P. to the daughter. And he then meets a god. And you learn that the gods are really just... Man, they some pieces of bleep in this uh, in this universe, man. They <laughs> they suck. <laughs> but uh, then that's pretty much a constant theme throughout the movie. Uh, so they kind of like try to justify why he does what he does. And I thought they did a decent job. Maybe could have been a little better. Like I said, they do explain that. Uh, throughout the movie, the theme is that the gods do suck. And they're very self-centered and all that kind of stuff, as you would imagine them to be. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway, so Christian Bale starts it off. And uh, I could kind of just tell from there that we were going to get something really good. And then very early on, I caught the, uh, I caught Infinity. Um, I want to say in that opening credit scene when the necro sword is talking to him that's the first glimpse you get of what would basically be the symbol for eternity or the symbol of eternity meaning just the the outlier of the head and shoulders the bust of him and uh, so i caught that really early on and i was like oh shit we're really getting like infinity infinity cuz i remembered thinking that we might get something of that well, in all honesty, I thought from, like, Doctor Strange and stuff. But I also thought uh, from the whole Infinity War and Endgame and stuff. Just because in the books, you know, that's part of what was in that whole storyline was eternity and death and the living uh, tribunal and all that kind of stuff. So, but anyways, didn't get that until now. So you do get eternity, which was cool and all speak more on that again later but so he starts it off and then from there I mean you really just have a a cool Thor movie it, it has its funny moments like I said I think maybe pushed it a little far on this one but I will give them credit because I went into this movie in all honesty I was excited but at the same time I had low expectations because I wasn't sure how they were going to handle gore and how they were going to handle from what the trailers appeared to be definitely riding the coattails of Ragnarok and doing another comedy type. So I will say they balanced it better than I thought that they would be able to as far as when they didn't try to make Gore and his scenes funny. At least in my opinion, if I'm remembering right. So, that I appreciated. Because that was really what was going to ruin it for me. But, they had the rest of the movie where it was funny. And then, when Gore came on the screen, it was serious time. It, and he was, Christian Bale was effing phenomenal, man. He did such a great job. His presence, which you knew he was going to kill it. Of course he was. And he did. Um, he was very creepy, sinister, scary. Just, he was awesome. In all honesty, I was like, yo, who would have thought that Batman could play Joker? Or who would have thought that Batman would be giving off some damn Joker vibes? The dude honestly could have played either freaking role. But anyways, that's... Neither here nor there. I'm just saying, Christian Bale is phenomenal. And uh, he does a great job as the character Gore. He really, really does. Now, uh, I had spoken about, I believe on the Low Grade Show, shout out to us every Friday. Um, it, I had spoken about, you know, were they going to change his look during the movie and make him look a little more comic accurate? Uh, answers, no. But in all honesty... I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. Uh, I thought he would, did such a great job and he was such a great presence that he was fine. He was fine the way he was. It, it really was. I mean, it would have been cooler to see a more transformed version, you know, where the whole, like, 
symbiote kind of, I don't know, he resembled the symbiote a little more. Or even had the tendrils, I think is what you call them when they have that stuff. But, I mean, either, either or, like I said, doesn't really matter. Sorry. Because he did a great job. He did a phenomenal job. And, and they balanced it very well, in my opinion, as far as the humor to his scenes. There was still a lot of humor. Uh, but it, it flowed. It flowed all right. I don't really have complaints about that. Um, I also did take a note of, uh, speaking of uh, Eternity, um, you're going to get him, I say him, but you'll get the character Eternity, beginning, middle, and end. The end being, I mean, I loved that part. Seeing that come to life, quote unquote, seeing that go from the pages to the screen, I definitely had like a oh my god moment because it was just awesome to see that like I said to just see eternity how you see them in the comic books to see that come to the big screen and be that presence I thought it was awesome it was really really cool to see that also at the end of the movie during the fight with gore uh you have these statues lying around. Now, I'm sure at some point someone will dissect it all. Uh, to me, it was uh, whatever the things from Eternals were called. That's the one that fell. Then you had definitely the Watcher in the middle. And then um, the Living Tribunal, again, because you had the floating three-sided head. On the other side... That one's harder to tell. It looked almost kind of like the demons that were uh, uh, that were up there with Thanos. Like, I don't even know what movie. Well, probably Avengers 1, I would think. There's like that demon that's talking to Loki when he's on the planet. Uh, it kind of looked like that. So I don't know if that's like a tie to death. And if there's... Uh, I don't know. I thought Infinity's a character can't remember for sure but anyways I'm sure someone will dissect what the rest of the heads were but definitely Watcher definitely one of the things from Eternals and definitely the Living Tribunal so to get Living Tribunal for me to get Living Tribunal and Eternity <clears throat> and I guess the Watcher but technically we've gotten the Watcher from the what if I know my focus is all out of whack so I apologize but <clears throat> you've got the Watcher from the what if already so to get Living Tribunal really and uh, Eternity was, that was awesome to see uh, in the MCU now. Um, also, what else? I mean, really to that point, just the cinematography, I guess would be the word for it. The scenes, the color schemes, it was all, uh, um omnipotent city or yeah no not omnipotent is it omnipotent i don't know omni whatever city where zeus and all of them were that was a beautiful scene as you can imagine to be i mean you know we've already seen like wakanda and all that kind of stuff we've seen the beautiful cities before so that was awesome but i really really freaking loved like thor's costume how bright it was i loved seeing uh Jane, which Jane Foster as Thor was awesome. She was badass. Valkyrie was badass. Probably, I probably could have gone with more Valkyrie. Um, yeah, maybe more Valkyrie, a little less Korg. Uh, but I mean, he's he's cool at the same time. And then you had these goats, which are the, another comedic relief, which was funny. There's a ton of funny shit that I could bring up here, but I'm not going to go over all the funny stuff, but the goats was funny, um, Korg was funny, could have maybe done with a little bit less, a little more Valkyrie, because she's awesome, Jane Foster was awesome, and the whole storyline and all that was cool, um, but yeah, man, the cinematography, I mean, the, the black and white fighting in the Shadow Realm, uh, then you go from that, 
and then like the way that they do the color scheme when they're using the thunder and the lightning and all that kind of stuff and then you go to the city of the gods uh and the color scheme of that and the way that that looked uh what else what else what else the opening scene to go from desert to this beautiful oasis it was just a lot of great scenes put together to make really cool moments and and they did a great job there the 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 space dolphins um which actually brings me to the point of the guardians of the galaxy uh they were awesome in it i liked that they're in it but they weren't a huge huge part that's what i kind of was wondering also was you know are we going to get like the first half of the movies with the guardians i mean how are they going to do it but honestly they're in there for a little bit to play their role and then they dip out you know, and the Guardians will do their own thing, and Thor will do his own thing. So I thought that that was cool to have them in there, but it definitely did not overdo it. It was just a fun way to kind of tie the, all that stuff together. Um, I loved, I think again, as we as a lot of people have noticed, you know, Marvel is heading to this younger route of building all these younger characters, maybe for a Young Avengers, most likely for a Young Avengers, let's be real, um, in this one. Spoiler alert, although the whole thing's been a spoiler, but it's going to end with, I don't know if they're officially calling her love, uh, being Gore's daughter coming back, and then now she's got the powers, because he basically made her infinity, or not infinity, uh, eternity, because when he makes his wish, and then it kind of does a reverse pan, you get a reflection of a girl in the water, but it's it's space eternity it, you know, if you know what it well, you'll know what it is when you watch the movie but eternity is like space in a in a in a body i don't know how to explain it but so you saw that in the reflection and then it turned into gore and the daughter so i'm guessing that's where she gets the powers from uh i am unfamiliar with her character i don't know if she's new if the MCU is in there making her a new character, I don't know if she is an existing character from the comics. I really don't know that. So, but she seems cool. Cute and adorable, man. I mean, towards the end of the movie, when you get the whole dad-daughter scene, adorable. And then uh, Axel, being Heimdall's son, you know, he's going to be pretty badass, too. And which brings me to the point of, I mean, the kids fighting... Uh, the shadow monsters that was an awesome scene for them to all get I know I keep saying awesome but for them to get uh, all of Thor's power not all of Thor's power for them to get Thor's powers to allow them to kind of fight with these weapons you had the freaking little girl with the doll and then you had the the other girl dressed as a fairy and she was going around splitting them in half and like that was so cool it was cool so and then uh, yeah Axel Heimdall's son, man, uh, what was it supposed to be, Astrid, Astrid, I think, Astrid, but he goes by Axel now, so anyways, uh, he was really cool, and then of course, you know, they later, at the end, talk about how he's begun even more training with Valkyrie and Lady Sif, and so, I assume he's gonna play a much bigger role, I assume Love is gonna play a much bigger role, because, I gotta admit, man, um, if we're gonna talk about characters ending I I will say kind of cheesy to go from like you killed Korg to then being like oh no he's not actually dead and then you killed Valkyrie or you thought she might die and then she doesn't so it kind of was like all right you're doing that thing where you want us to take it like oh damn they died and Zeus okay so you want us to take it seriously when these characters die on screen but none of them died but there is a character that did die. So I will say, don't do that shit again. Don't don't have Korg die and then be like, oh, he's not dead. Uh, oh, Valkyrie gets that. Oh, she's not dead. Oh, Zeus gets a fucking thunderbolt through the chest. Oh, he's not dead. Like, don't do that shit. If you're going to kill him, kill him. You know, as we all learned from Infinity War and Endgame, man, that emotional effect is sometimes needed. And it doesn't really achieve the same thing when you bring him right back. But anyways, neither here nor there. You did get one death. Uh, I am shocked, shocked that 
Mighty Thor Jane Foster is just one and done. I, I'm honestly surprised by that. I it sucks that gore seems like it's gonna be too, but honestly that's kind of the MO with most Marvel uh, characters, villains, sorry, no, not Marvel, MCU specifically, MCU villains definitely seem to just be one and done. So it kind of sucks that gore is gonna be gone, but yeah, I was not expecting, I honestly thought this was gonna be the transition from Hemsworth Thor to Mighty Thor. I really, really did. So I am shocked that that went the way that it did. Kudos to them for that. Um, yeah, what else do I got? I know I'm rambling, rambling, but hey, that's what Raiders Rants is, baby. Um, I think I pretty much covered all my notes. I mean, you have the uh, end credit scene. The last, last one is always kind of just like a, to me, like a throwaway, almost like a deleted scene that they just add in there. So you have her meeting Heim, uh, her, you have Dr. Jane Foster meeting Heimdall in Valhalla. That was cool. Necessary? I don't know. I mean, is there any more to that or that's kind of it? So I guess that's kind of it, whatever. As, like I said, always that's the last, last end credit. That seems to be the route that they keep going. It's just like a throwaway, funny, deleted scene, maybe a closure. I don't know. But the middle one uh, being, oh, Zeus is still alive, like I just said. And then the introduction to Hercules, which honestly I thought Hercules was in the movie, like during it. I thought that you were going to see him during the Omni City. Uh, so I was kind of surprised at that. So then when you got him in the end credits, it was kind of like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, yeah, it's cool to get an introduction to a new character, of course, but... Honestly, I thought we were going to see him way earlier anyway, so then when you just finally see him in the end credits, I was like, eh, okay. And I don't mean to sound like a nitpick or a negative person, I just, that's how I feel. I was expecting him earlier, so when I did finally get him in the end credit, it was kind of like, ah, oh, whatever, okay? Didn't have the same effect, I should say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, the rest of it, like I said, I feel like talking about the rest of the movie is talking about jokes, and the jokes are only cool to talk about when you watch the movie but the fight scenes were great them fighting gore was great like I said I could have done more of it I thought every scene that gore was in he nailed it man I mean from terrorizing the kids to the first fight uh in New Asgard which was kind of cool that that turned she turned that shit into like a tourist town but uh the first fight there the fight in the shadow realm then you get the end fight. So, I mean, I guess technically speaking, he is he is in a good portion of the movie. So, um, But I think it's he's just such a great character that you could have seen him more and more and more and more and not really complained about it. So, that was great. Fight scenes were great. Jokes were funny. I did laugh. I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't find the movie to be fun or enjoyable or funny. It was. I just felt like, at times, maybe done a little too much. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, fun movie. Check it out. I will say I'm still a little tiny bit... Although getting Eternity and stuff is cool, I don't know exactly what that sets up future-wise. I mean, you're just... Other than the fact that you are slowly building more of this cosmic stuff. I, so I guess it is, it is definitely a big deal, don't get me wrong, to introduce that stuff. You're introducing some major, major cosmic-level entities... So from that aspect, you're building towards something. But I am still, I mean, how many movies past Endgame are we? And we still, between all the TV show, all the Disney Plus shows, and now all the movies, we still have no clear direction as to what in the hell is next for Marvel. What is next? What direction are we heading? I mean, like I said, obviously we can all go... Fantastic Four, we can go Cosmic, all of that's understood. You know, I, I think that, that, like I said, introducing the Cosmic Entities is obviously just going to push that narrative further, but I just mean like Spider-Man, Shang-Chi, Spider-Man again, Black Widow, uh, now you have Thor, like, there's been a bunch, and then all the TV shows, you've had a lot of Marvel MCU stuff 
done in what is this phase four I believe I think it's phase four right so you've had a ton of phase four content for us to still have no clear path as to where this is all headed and obviously I trust them obviously they're doing it intentionally but I am still waiting what what so I guess I'll end it with the question to you guys what movie is going to finally set up like straight up the future of MCU Thanos level type stuff because honestly I don't think that Kang is it from the Loki series um, Doctor Strange which I was certain Doctor Strange was going to set up some crazy shit it really did it I mean don't get me wrong it's it you got the X-Men um, the Illuminati stuff yeah but in all honesty, the Illuminati stuff could be one and done. You know, that could have been fan service for that movie. Who knows? So, what is the movie that we're finally going to get? Because I don't think Black Panther 2 is going to be it either. I think Black Panther 2 is going to focus on the change of the tragic death of Chadwick Boseman and the changeover to Shuri and Namor. But do they build on that? Is it Namor plus Fantastic Four? I don't know. Or is it just going to be Namor? And if it is just Namor, what's the movie down the line? When or what movie do you guys think we are going to finally get the answer to where this is headed? Finally. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for tuning in. I, I, I'm not even going to sit here and promise to drop a 